Uh, historians, futurists, I believe that we are all historians and futurists. Uh, it doesn't take a college degree, a certificate, doesn't take any official form of documentation to know that we are constantly, consciously and unconsciously creating the future. While we have made history, we meet in the present, the fourth dimension of time, here we are. The human story, we are sampling the past to shape the future, hip hop. Why hip hop? It is the dominant form of musical entertainment throughout the world, impacting hundreds of millions of people's lives, their perceptions of past, present, and future. Futurism, lust, infinite growth, and perpetual progress through technology. Futurism, what is it? What are we talking about? Uh, there are many origin points to any story, but I think a good starting point for futurism is Italy in the early 1900s. The futurist movement in Italy inspires a futurist movement in Russia, various futurist movements throughout Europe. I believe it has profoundly inspired America, the West, our globalization of the entire world. But what is this movement about? It's about abstract speed and technological fury. Every aspect of society, every element of human interaction and development should be based on this speed, this fury. It's about the car. It's about airplanes, right? And I'm sure these futurists envisioned one day all of us carrying around our computers in our pockets, nanosecond time culture, constantly looking at moving images too quick for us to fix our eyes on any one of them. This was what it was about, this futurism. And as artists, architects, social thinkers, you know, these people imagined something that was coming, something that was coming down the pipeline, something bigger than that moment. I believe this futurist movement that they envisioned, this futurism, it has defined the last 100 years of our existence on planet Earth. We want no part of the past, they said. We are the young and strong futurists. Futurist Manifesto, 1909. Futurism, we may not call what we're doing futurism, we call it a lot of different things, but it looks like this, a future built on speed, a present lacking sensuality, there's no time for that, exponential technological growth, dreams of technological immortality, digital global capital corresponding with a paradigm of profit over people, mechanical power, and at the same time an ignorance and avoidance of natural organic systems. Live in the future with no sense of history, no time for presence. Does that sound familiar? We think about yoga. Yoga is such a luxury in our society. Why is it so sought after? Just to have an hour of time to breathe, to be present with your body, to not think about anything. American popular culture, I believe that American popular culture has been the dominant transmission of futurist ideas throughout our society over the last 100 years. The soul has been all but gutted from the popular arts. There's no time for the soul. Again, it's about speed, technology, violence, perpetual being, perpetually being in motion. It's about power. History, if it exists, it is in a vacuum, maybe over there or in a closet up there. But in many situations, it's nowhere to be found. While we have this dominant form of, of futurism that is shaping our everyday lives and every sector of society, we have always had those who push back, right? We have always had alternative futurists. Many t in many cases, our artists, our social thinkers, our philosophers, they came to claim time, to show face, human demands amidst the machines. When we think about our musical landscape, the history of music in America, our music, Blues, jazz, punk, street poetry, all leading up to hip hop. In their rawest forms, artistic movements always challenge the dominant paradigm. They always challenge the mainstream narrative, the direction of progress. But you think about an artist like Sun Ra, one of the first jazz musicians to incorporate electronic keyboards into the live instrumentation around him. He's tapping into that futurist energy and saying, how can I merge this, this technology with what's organic, with what's human, with what's natural, with what's already happening on stage? And at the same time, he's the artist that says, space is the place, right? And Earth is in space. It's all interconnected. Leading up you know, through, through these artistic movements through the 60s and 70s, the poetry of the 60s and 70s. 
I think about Chicano movement poets like Corky Gonzalez, Lalo Delgado, who are right here in Denver, Colorado, who are documenting what it means to live in this concrete jungle, this speed, this technology, this notion of perpetual progress with a capital P. They're documenting it. They're talking to us about it, about the past, the present, the future. And the artistic movements in the visual sense are reflecting the same thing. I think about Chicano Park in Vario Logan, San Diego, where this park is, this land was supposed to be turned into a highway patrol uh, station, you know, or like a juvenile detention center. The people fought to keep it a park. And this bridge, the Coronado Bridge that was built over Vario Logan, they turned it into one of the largest outdoor mural parks in the world. And what kind of images are on these huge beams, these huge slabs of concrete, images that remind us of the past, the present, the future, images that challenge the mechanization of our lives. Black poets like Gil Scott Heron, Watts Prophets, The Last Poets, the original rappers. You know, the poetry's getting faster. The lyricism, the lyricism has to keep up. It has to be cutthroat, it has to be mean, it has to get to the heart of the matter. They are tapping into this energy and at the same time challenging us. And all of this is leading up to the birth of hip hop. Improv history, innate social rebellion, concrete creatives. The elements of hip hop, these independent artistic movements that are coming together in the Bronx, the West and South Bronx of New York City in the early 70s, the mid 70s, graffiti, DJing, breakdancing, break b-boying, MCing, you know, spitting, spitting your rhymes on the mic. All of these things are coming together to, to form what we now know as hip hop. Right? But Africa Bombada, one of the, the first hip-hop futurists, you see him uh, top of your screen at the right. This futurist tells us that hip-hop is about knowledge, and it's about peace, love, unity, and having fun. And that these other elements don't matter if they are not rooted in knowledge, in wisdom, in spirituality. So why don't we see this when we turn on our TV, MTV, VH1, BET? They're reflections of hip-hop. Why don't we hear this on KS1075? If we expect profit over people media to give us anything of substance, you know, on a human level, on a soul level, on a cultural level, we're looking at the wrong place. Rap for commercial consumption, I believe that the supreme marketing tool for the dominant futurist paradigm is rap because of its power because of the power of hip-hop, the lyricism, the beats rooted in the drums that connect to our heartbeat. But if you look at, you know, uh, profitable mainstream rap music, what is it about? Cutthroat capitalism, consumerism, luxury rap, speed and technological progress, predatory sexuality and violence, perceived black gangsterism meets white wealth and privilege, adds sexuality through the lens of male interests, racism, sexism, classism. Unfortunately, it's a prime recipe for making billions of dollars in American media. Conversely, hip-hop culture, on a ground level, not underground, but above ground, the celebration of mind, body, spirit, a critical analysis of the times, political, cultural, and social relevance represented through our lyricism. It is diverse and eclectic. It is universal. It is about peace, love, unity, and having fun. We have seen our fair share of hip-hop futurists in the mainstream influencing the collective consciousness, our cultural ambassadors pushing the creative envelope. We see our critical minds inquiring about the past, the present, the future, challenging us to think differently about what progress may mean beyond technology, beyond humans. Cultural creatives elevating our consciousness. But beyond the corporate lens, beyond the mainstream lens, hip hop demands space for the natural, the organic, the sensual, the creative, the transformative, concrete, abstract, revolutionary ideas rooted in humanity, consciousness, and creativity. Denver hip hop, if you are a fan of rap music or hip hop or any of the genres that led up to hip hop, if you don't know about Denver's hip hop scene, I challenge you, I invite you to do your research. We got one of the dopest hip hop scenes on the planet and it's bigger than the music. It's much bigger than the music. It's about the future that we are creating consciously as a community. Hip hop is about taking something old and making it new. The essence of hip hop is transformation. 
This I have been taught by my favorite producer, my DJ who I've been working with for the last five, six years, DJ Icewater. Some people say that hip hop is dead. It will never die, it's not going anywhere, but it's changing. The same way we cannot look the way we did 10, 20 years ago, if you want hip hop to look like that, you're out of luck. It's a different thing, but it's not dying. What I believe is dying is the old futurism, the old notion of progress. So old, future dying, storytellers gather, sticks, stones, beats, breaks, flows. We are gathering to create a new future. What does the future of the future look like? Whatever your thing is, be it hip hop, architecture, food, healthcare, what does the future of the future look like? Because it starts in our collective consciousness. To me, thinking about hip hop and, and some of my passions, I see a future of integrative urban, uh, urban arts planning in which murals, graffiti art are reflected in our public arts programs. And we see more haiku and spoken word and more lyricism that's reflected in our three-dimensional works of art. We have culturally relevant sustainability programs that invite young people from different cultures to come together for culturally relevant education to learn about food, about sustainable systems, about natural systems, to mimic the environment instead of fighting against it for progress. We need a new paradigm of youth education that is integrative of the arts, because arts push so many of our ideas and inspire our young people. So we can't gut the arts programs. We can't gut the physical education programs. We need programs for our youth that make them feel good in their minds, their bodies, and their spirits. How about a youth media studio that is at the forefront of the changes that we need to see in education? We're we are actually building this youth media studio here in Denver, Colorado, putting youth on record, inviting them to speak their truth, to speak their minds, to elevate the consciousness of everybody around them so that we can build the next generation of futurists who will lead us in a different direction. Technology is dope, but you can't eat your Twitter. You cannot breathe your Facebook. You cannot drink your YouTube. We are still human beings, and we will continue to thrive, but we need a new paradigm of futurism. Thank you, TEDx.